Darlings, welcome to the beauty verse. That was my really lame attempt at a Charlotte Tilbury accent. What's up you guys? Today we are gonna be talking about Charlotte Tilbury's new holiday collection. I have the Beautyverse palette and also one of her little cheek duos that she just released. And I have some thoughts, so I wanted to share them with you guys. I can tell you right now, they're not all good thoughts. I kind of feel like I wasted my money in a lot of ways, but we will get to that. First, if you guys are new here, hi, my name is Jen and I do a lot of makeup reviews here on my channel, usually with a drugstore focus. Today I am gonna be talking about a high-end product, but also I will be talking about drugstore as well because one half of my face is actually drugstore makeup and the other half is the Charlotte Tilbury products. So I'm curious to know um, just right off the start, which side do you guys think is drugstore, blush, and eyeshadow and which side do you think is high-end? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. One of my eyes is actually a $10 palette and the other one is the $75 Beautyverse palette. So I will be sure to let you know which is which, but first I just want to kind of go through these palettes a little bit and talk about like why I'm not so crazy about them. I also have some comparisons and alternatives to this one from my collection. So you're not gonna wanna miss that as well. So let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. All right, so first let's go ahead and just look at this palette up close. Packaging wise, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. This really sucked me right in. Um, these colors inside are my vibe. I love colors like this and I was just really drawn to it and this is a $75 palette for nine shades which is really on the expensive side and Charlotte Tilbury's eyeshadows don't always wow me so I really I wasn't sure what to expect but these just look so shimmery and glittery and just really holiday you know so I wanted to give it another shot and see what this was all about and formula wise these matte shades feel almost like cream shadows. I couldn't really find any information on whether they're creams or powders. They certainly have the feel of a cream. They're called her Future Matte Formula, and to me, they feel exactly like Natasha Denona's cream shadows. If you've ever felt those that are in some of her palettes, it's a really thick Thin, almost weightless formula, very, very skin-like going on. It has a little bit of a satin finish to it. It's not completely flat matte. And then when it comes to the shimmer shades in this palette, there's really one shade, that silvery blue, that feels like that buttery metallic kind of a shimmer shade. All the rest to me feel like toppers. So they have a lot of glitter. They feel kind of scratchy. They're difficult to pick up in the pan and they don't have a lot of pigmentation behind them. They're most sparkle so that's something I definitely wanted to highlight and I think one of the things that disappointed me about this palette I know so many people are into the topper type shades right now but it's just it's not my thing I love a more rich metallic shade with a lot of pigment behind it that was the first thing that kind of let me down as far as this palette goes on the back of the palette she actually lists what the different finishes are and she's calling this blue shade her crystal glow formula and she's also calling these three down on the bottom row the crystal glow formula but they do not feel like this blue shade at all they all feel very scratchy kind of similar to this one this is the only one that she says is a topper and it's called the party topper I would say out of all of them this one definitely has the least pigment it's really just like a trail of glitter when you go to swatch it the other ones on the bottom have a little bit more pigment, but they have the feel of this silvery topper one. So right away, I can tell you if you don't like toppers, do not buy this palette because you're not gonna like that almost every shimmer shade in here is that topper feel. And then when it comes to the little blush duo, this is really cute and I actually love the color that's in here, this blush. It's such a pretty, happy, bright pink. There are two different versions of this palette. So this is the lighter one. And again, we have a beautiful bright pink blush and then a champagne colored highlighter that actually leans a little bit pink. I really like the tone of this highlighter a lot. Everything swatched very smoothly, really fine 
finely milled. They both just feel like a really nice formula, so I really don't have any issues as far as this little palette goes. I think it's really, really pretty. But as always, I do want to show you some lower cost alternatives to these palettes in case you're not really willing to spend $75 on this or $29 on this one. And I just wanna put it out there that I do not dislike high-end makeup. I know I do a lot of these comparisons and I show you drugstore or lower priced alternatives to high-end brands. The reason that I do that is just because I don't want you to waste your hard-earned money on something that you could maybe find for a lower amount. Now, I'm not saying don't buy high-end makeup. Of course, I buy it all the time and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But at the same time, I don't wanna sit here and tell you all that you, know, you have to buy these specific products because you're not gonna find anything else like them. It's just not true. And I don't want you all to spend $75, get this palette home and realize, you know what? I actually have one of these other palettes I'm about to show you and it's so close and then you have regrets. I just don't want that to happen. So the first one that I wanted to share is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Cosmos palette. So this one is not inexpensive. It's $55. It's still 20 bucks less than the Charlotte Tilbury and you do get more shades in the Cosmos palette. And when you see them side by side, they look really, really close. I saw so many very similar shades between the two. And when I swatched them out even more so, I wouldn't say that every shade is identical. For example, the Anastasia palette it doesn't have the pink matte shade that the Charlotte Tilbury has, but a lot of the shades I think are close enough that if you already have the Cosmos palette, which I know a lot of you guys do, you might not want to go out and spend the 75 bucks on the Charlotte Tilbury. It just wouldn't make sense when they're so close. Also, the Anastasia palette doesn't have those topper shades in it. So if you like those more creamy metallics, then you're going to get those in the Anastasia Cosmos. Another one that I wanted to compare it to is the What's Up Beauty Geodes palette. This is another one you guys have heard me talk about quite a bit. And I love this formula. It's so, so good. It's actually made in Italy, just like Charlotte Tilbury. And again, it doesn't have the toppers. It has regular shimmer shades that are really foiled and metallic and beautiful. And the matte shades are some of the smoothest mattes ever. They just blend so nicely. Again, we don't have exact matches for every single shade, but I do think that the vibes are there. Also, we have the Profusion Ethereal Palette. This is another one that I've talked about quite frequently on my channel. And I think, again, there are a lot of really similar shades going on between the two. And the Profusion Palette is $10. And I'm actually gonna show this palette in action today because this is the one that I'm wearing on one of my eyes in the video. And I do think it really holds its own against the Charlotte Tilbury. So we're gonna talk about that. And then we also had the Moira Falling For You palette, which I thought might be kind of similar. In reality, it's not exact. We don't have the bluish silver color in here. And this one also doesn't have quite as many neutral mattes. They're mostly rosy and lavender colors in the Moira palette, but there are some satiny shimmer shades that you could probably use in place of mattes here. So those are the ones that I swatched against the Charlotte Tilbury mattes. Otherwise, I think this is another beautiful palette. It has those really pretty ethereal vibes. So if you have any of those four palettes in your collection already, then you have a lot of the same colors as the Charlotte Tilbury and you may not really feel the need to go right out and buy it. And then as far as the blush duo goes, I had a couple of blushes in my collection that I thought were so similar and they're both at the drugstore. So um, as far as the blush goes, I found this color to be extremely similar to the Almay Healthy Hue Blush and this one is in the shade Pink Flush. This is such an underrated blush formula. I know I've kind of talked about it in hidden gem videos because Alme, they really don't get a lot of hype and really for good reason. They hardly ever come out with anything new and some of their products just aren't the best but these blushes are the exception. They're a baked formula and they are so smooth and so easy to apply. I actually have all the colors because I just love them so much. And then when it comes to the highlighter, I thought that the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighter in Precious Petals is so similar. It has that same champagne tone, but it has that little bit of pink, just like the one in the Charlotte Tilbury palette. And the Wet n Wild highlighters are some of my favorite in my collection because they are so smooth. And you're gonna see like when I put it on my face, 
how much smoother it actually is than the Charlotte Tilbury one, which is a little bit more glittery. So I can't wait to show you that as well. I also forgot to mention that I picked up a new tube of her Pillow Talk lipstick. I had a little mini like this from Holiday years ago, and she has these little mini tubes on her website again. So I just wanted to grab a new one because the one I had was so old, but I really love this color and I enjoy the formula. So I wanted to quickly show you a really good drugstore alternative to this. I have have shown some in the past. For example, um, Flower Beauty's Spiced Petal is pretty close. It's not identical, but it's kind of similar. Also, L'Oreal's lipstick number 173 is also a super close dupe for it. I'll show you that one really quick. I mean, even down to the shape of the bullet, L'Oreal really just seemed like they were trying to dupe this. Now, the big difference here with the L'Oreal is that it has a little bit more shine. It's more of a satiny, creamy lipstick. So it does have that little bit of like a dewy finish, whereas the Charlotte Tilbury one is more matte. So that's really the big difference. And also I think the L'Oreal is just slightly, slightly more pink, but I do think this is a really close dupe that looks very similar on the lips. The one that I wanted to show you guys today though is one that I just found recently. And this is from e.l.f. It's their O Face lipstick and this is in the shade Dirty Talk. So I'm kind of thinking Dirty Talk, Pillow Talk sounds really, really similar. And the formula also feels really similar on this one. The e.l.f. also has that soft matte finish. It's not a drying matte and it feels very creamy going on. I actually find the e.l.f. ones to be very similar to the NARS lipsticks and I have talked about them being a dupe for those before, at least in terms of formula, but it also feels very similar to the Charlotte Tilbury as well. And I think this color is even closer than the L'Oreal one. So let's go ahead and get into the demo and I'll show you which side is which. So first on the Charlotte Tilbury side, I'm picking up the shade Cosmic Pink, which is one of her future matte shades. And I'm picking it up on the BK Beauty A504 brush, which is from their Angie Hot and Flashy collection. And I'm just gonna start working this shade into my crease. This is a tiny little brush that I love using for crease shades because having hooded eyes, I can just get the color exactly where I want it. And then I can just go ahead and blend it out with a larger, fluffier brush. So this is the large blending eyeshadow brush from Profusion. And this shade is really very seamless. It almost feels like a cream shadow, like I mentioned before. There's zero fallout. It feels very, very silky and it blends out beautifully, almost too much because I kind of felt like as I was blending, it lost a little bit of that vibrancy and the pink color. And then over on the Profusion side, I'm applying the shade Cherry Blossom. This is a similar shade. It's not exactly the same. And the Cherry Blossom shade is slightly brighter than the Cosmic Pink in the Charlotte Tilbury palette. But I'm using the exact same brush again to just apply this right to my crease and it is really nicely pigmented. Again, this is a $10 palette and I really love working with these shadows. I have no issues with them whatsoever. So I just put this in my crease, working it back and forth with that A504 brush and then taking that same Profusion brush, I just cleaned it off quickly. Um, I'm gonna be just blending this out and I think this blends beautifully. Then again, on the Charlotte Tilbury side, I'm gonna be picking up the shade Space Chocolate, which is another one of the future matte shades and I'm also applying this with that same A504 brush. It's just a really nice tiny size to get right into the outer corner of your eye, which is where I'm placing this one. And again, I had no issues with this whatsoever. These are such blendable shadows that really just melt into the skin effortlessly. But again, once I had this blended, I felt like these two shades together kind of looked a little bit muddy. I didn't see a lot of definition between the two. They almost kind of melt into the skin too much. So that's just another observation that I have using this one. And then over on the Profusion side, I'm picking up the shade Roots, which is a really, really similar color. It's a mid to deep brown with a really warm undertone. And just like the pink shade, I feel like this is going on nicely pigmented, but not overly so, not to the point where it's gonna take me forever to blend it out. I think these are just, like I said, they're very easy to work with. I've always liked Profusion's formula. I think it's just a really good option at the drugstore. Once I have this blended out, then I'm going back into the Charlotte Tilbury palette and picking up the shade Digital Lilac, which is one of those sparkle toppers down 
on the bottom row. And I did apply my NYX glitter glue to my lid because this is a really glittery shade and I don't wanna get a lot of fallout. So I'm just packing that on top of the glitter glue and it's really bringing it to life. I think it shows up a lot more vibrantly on top of that base than it did just swatching it on my arm. So I think if you have a sticky glitter primer, it's really gonna help these shadows to pop a little bit more on the eyes. Then in the Profusion palette, I'm picking up the shade Delicate, which is a really, really similar color. This is actually a cream shadow, so it has a bit of a different texture going on, but I feel like it's just as sparkly as the Digital Lilac shade. And I also applied this over the NYX glitter primer. I don't think it really needs it because it's a cream shadow, but I just want it to be very consistent between the two sides. And I think this shade also shows up really beautifully. I think the biggest difference that I'm seeing between the two is that the glitters in the Charlotte Tilbury shade are silvery, while the ones in the Profusion color are pretty much the same color as the shadow itself. It's like a bunch of lilac glitters. But I think both make a really nice impact on the eyes, and honestly, I'm happy with the way that both of them came out. Moving on to the cheeks, I'm gonna pick up the blush in the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Blush and Glow. This is such a beautiful pop of pink. I really love this color so much. And I'm just applying this with the BK Beauty 112 brush. It's a small angled blush brush. And I, again, really love this because it just helps to get precise placement with your blush. And this blush is very pigmented. So I just picked up the littlest amount and I think this is gonna be plenty. I don't feel like I have to go back into the compact and get any more because of the pigmentation level. And then on the other side, I'm picking up that Almay Healthy Hue Blush in the shade Pink Flush. Again, this is a baked formula. So it is really blendable, very silky and smooth not any powder kick up whatsoever. And I think these two colors are just about spot on. They look almost exactly the same on my cheeks. And I almost feel like the Alme blush blended a little bit better than the Charlotte Tilbury one did. I think that one was just slightly too pigmented. So I just kind of had to go back and blend that one out a little bit just to make sure that they looked even and smooth. But looking at them both side by side, I think the colors are pretty much identical. Then when it comes to highlighter, we'll start with the Charlotte Tilbury side first. And I'm picking this up with my What's Up Beauty R201 highlighter brush. And I'm just applying this right to the top of my cheekbone. And one thing that I noticed about this highlighter right away is that it is a little bit more of a glittery highlighter, which isn't my favorite. I feel like if there's glitters, they can somewhat enhance the texture on my cheeks. So I usually prefer a smoother highlighter formula. And then on the other side, we're gonna pick up the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder in the shade Precious Petals, which as you saw, the color is really similar. It kind of has a little bit of a rosy champagne undertone. And when I apply this one with the same brush, this one just goes on so much more smooth. It has a little bit more of a metallic finish versus a glittery one. And I really prefer the finish of this one. I think up close, it just looks a little more seamless. It looks a little bit smoother. I mean, like any highlighter, it is going to enhance texture somewhat, but I just think it doesn't enhance it quite as much as the Charlotte Tilbury side, which looks a little bit more sparkly. Then for my lips, I'm gonna apply the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Revolution lipstick in the shade Pillow Talk on one side of my lips. And even though this is a matte lipstick, it is very creamy. I really don't have any issues with this feeling dry. So I am a fan of this formula for sure. Then on the other side, I'm gonna apply the e.l.f. O Face Lipstick in the shade Dirty Talk. And to be honest, this looks and feels identical. The way that it just lays down so much pigment in one swipe, the formula feels so close. It's that matte finish again, but it has the really creamy, more hydrating feel. And overall, I'm not seeing much difference at all from side to side, both in terms of the colors and the finishes. I think it's a really even comparison that we have going on here. Okay, so as you saw, this side is Drugstore, this side is Charlotte Tilbury, and really, I almost like the Drugstore side a little bit better on the cheeks. I think this side just looks so much smoother, the highlighter especially, and I felt like the blush kind of blended a little bit easier on this side, whereas over here, this highlighter is just a little bit more glittery. And as far as the eyeshadows go, I mean, I think they both look nice, but if you can get like the same kind of look with a $10 palette, 
it really makes no sense to pay the 75 for this one unless you just like you love the packaging and you love her whole aesthetic then I say go for it just as long as you love toppers because that's what you're gonna get in here but the reason that I have so many regrets about buying the palette especially is just because I have so many that are like this already and it's obvious based on these other palettes that I've purchased that I love this type of color scheme but even though it is a nice palette I just don't see it being worth $75 that's just my opinion you can feel free to disagree with me but I don't really love topper shades and I didn't know going into this that all of them were going to be toppers except for one because she only has the silver one listed as a topper so I was really disappointed to find out that these three on the bottom are also like that and also I do like the blush and highlighter palette I don't think at $29 this is really going to break the bank like the palette would I do wish the highlighter wasn't quite as glitter as this and now that I've found those drugstore options obviously they're not in this beautiful packaging and they're not together so maybe going out and buying these two isn't as fun as buying this one again that's kind of up to you and how you feel but just know that these are out there if you're looking for these colors specifically you can really get the same kind of look out of these and I've used both of these products for years and I know how long-lasting they are on the cheeks they're not going to be something Thing that just like wears away because I think that's another part of doing comparisons is not just comparing colors but how long do they wear on the face and I know that these are really great products that for me have stood the test of time and also I mean I've worn this profusion palette like a million times I don't know how the Charlotte Tilbury one is going to wear on me today I can always leave a comment down below but I do know that I get really good wear time out of this and also the other ones that I showed the Cosmos palette the What's Up Beauty and the Moira. Like I've used all of these palettes many times and I think they're all very solid choices and they're all less expensive. So anyway, guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this down below. Are you planning to buy the Charlotte Tilbury palette or have you already? And if so, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And I really wanna thank you all so much for clicking on this video and for spending time here on my channel. I really do appreciate it. And if you have some extra time and you'd like to watch another video, as always, I'll just pop my playlist right up here. Some of my more recent videos to check out next. Also, if you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider hitting the subscribe button before you go. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you in my next one. Take care, guys. Bye.